Hi guys, uh, happy Thursday. <laughs> the weekend's coming, yay. No, not really. Okay, so, um, yeah, Ouija sessions are on their way, um, more Ouija sessions are coming, um, tarot readings, all of it, so it was really good to get back on the board. It was really intense. I mean, really intense. It was like a giant, I don't know, don't even remember the session, but it was good. So, it was very coded, very coded, and I don't know why. But, alright, back into the, um, Children of Cain, and it just gets even more and more interesting as we go along. So, alright, now, many of those who work with Cochran, and those who, um, are still following his system outside the official clan of Tubal Cain, have attested to the fact that it does, they say, the rituals cause changes in the atmosphere of those who it of those who practice them, and in many uh, cases, tangible spirit manifestations are experienced in the circle. So there's a lot of good testimony about the clan of Tubal Cain's workings. So, but despite her um, reservations about his craft background, Doreen Valiente was on record as saying that she gave Cochran credit for having given me the opportunity to take part in some of the best Sabbaths I have attended, unquote. It probably was a pretty good party. I mean, wow. Now, Bill Gray also said that from his personal experience in the circle with him, Cochran possessed real power and he had seen him um, transfigured by supernatural energy during the rituals um, that he attended. So, Gray also had no doubt from his own personal experience that Cochran was a gifted healer. He furthermore described the rituals of his coven as real magic that touched upon something deep within the, li the land and the psyche. Now, Marion Green, editor of the Long Running Quest magazine, and a lecturer, workshop uh, facilitator, conference organizer, and writer of popular books on witchcraft and magic, met Crockett Cochran in 1964, <laughs> and for a while she was on the, f on the fringes of his coven. So after his death, she became a member of the inner circle of the Regency whose origin and history will be explained later, so it's, it's really interesting. Um, so Green had this to say about the rituals she experienced. Alright, this is really pretty interesting, so... Alright, although quite complicated rituals were performed, I was never given a script, but a list of moves or prayers, which had to be learnt by heart. It could be a seasonal celebration, or a meeting to call on the ancestors, or the spirit of the land. To give an oracle, for example, the rituals were, bleh, the rituals were often um, a very long with stamping dances, invocations, and prayers, building up a powerful and magical atmosphere. So they were for lo far louder, wilder, and more primitive than anything I have ever written down. I love it. So it was the feeling of raw, raw and ancient energy, and the visions of things half seen by firelight that stuck with me. Almost half a century later, Cochrane may have not been um, all the things he claimed, or that have been, been claimed about him since his death, but he really did know how to work with the forces of the land. And with uh, time, she feels that, um, and with um, elemental beings, in what still feels like an authentic ancient way. I have never come across any other situation where the elemental forces and the wild beings of the land, both visible and invisible, were brought into the fire-lit circle to be experienced for healing knowledge and power. Something, he must have done something right. I mean, if it works, it works. Why not do it? So, it's just not my, my thing. So, when he was a member of uh, Cochrane's... Uh, Coven, John Jones, uh, admitted that 99% of their workings were an illusion created by words, action, and atmosphere. Even so, at some part in the ritual, the illusion stopped and reality took over. From that point on, things used to happen, unquote. That's pretty interesting, too. It's wild. I like that. Okay, so Jones was convinced that Cochran had what genuine occultists called the inner contacts and the circle he has a very in the circle he has a very powerful magician psychic and healer so it is pretty clear from the 
foregoing description of his life that in many ways Robert Cochran was a flawed and even dysfunctional character. And I find that to be with a lot of um, craft practitioners. Yeah, I won't say anything more. So, he was not the first, and he will not be the last, magician or occultist who suffered from that handicap. That handicap. So, however, it cannot be denied that Cochran was a powerful and accomplished magician, healer, and ritual practitioner. So, pretty good story. I mean, pretty good and decent testimonies of, you know, being in circle with him and being in ritual. So, um, as such, he had a tremendous and positive influence on those around him. It, the most damaged people usually do, <laughs> because they help other people before they help themselves, and I kind of feel like that that's the case with uh, Cochran. He was all about, you know, helping other people, but, yeah, he just disregarded himself. Now, even Dorian, Doreen Valiente, who had questioned his historical claims and left his group as a reason, said that when he died, it was a great blow. She also praised him as the most powerful personality in modern witchcraft. So Valiente uh, sincerely believed that if he, he lived longer, Cochrane would be, um, have matured into a great leader of the craft. See, and then it, when, but this is when he died. So these are all the testimonies of when he was dead. I wonder what they would have to say now. But Doreen, she's gone. Um, I think a lot of these people are gone, I think. But I just, I wonder what they would say now. So, Robert Cochran was a highly intelligent, talented man, and because of that, Valiant, they ultimate, or claimed, that he would have uh, learned patience and judgment as the years passed and he got older. Now, Shawnee Oates, the present maid of the clan of Tubal Cain, who was granted the title by Evan John Jones in 1998, he said of Cochran, Wait, where'd I go? Like any craftsman, he was able to mold raw material into a magical synthesis, creating a, um, a marvelous working system, which at one, wait, which at one was instinctively true and instinctively beautiful. So, it's really interesting. I mean, it's really interesting. All these testimonies. So she had also said that because of Cochrane, uh, was convinced that he had the responsibility of three centuries of hereditary gnosis, he processized a surprisingly modern perspective to traditional craft practices. So, I, he could have. He could have been tapping into something, and then, I don't know. It would have been neat to see what he would have done today. So his idiosyncratic um, expo oh, expositions uh, accentuated his uh, innovative flair for evolutionary and militant interpretation. So certainly Co Robert Cochran's influence from beyond the grave, sometimes quite literally, um, on the present revival of interest in traditional witchcraft has been considerable. So I wonder what that means, beyond the grave. Who's talking to him? Are you guys? Anybody? Anybody talking to him? I don't know. So, all right, we'll leave off there and do some coffee talk. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting what he has to say, or everything that's surrounding this man. Okay, also... Okay, I've got to write this down. I cannot write on a napkin. Okay, well hopefully I... Yeah, that one down. But yeah, it's very interesting, very. I love it. Alright, let's see what everybody's talking about. Coffee talk. If I can get there. Where am I? Okay, there I am. I'm like, where am I? Here I am. I feel a load for me. So yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. YouTube comments. Hmm. Sometimes I swear this takes forever. 
forever. There we go. Hopefully. Okay, yeah, there we go. But yeah, that's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting stuff, especially with the historic, the history of, you know, the Chupacane clan. Just everything is pretty cool. Alright. Where are my comments? Here they are. Hopefully. Alright. Uh, Michelle uh, Lahorn, how can I get in touch with you? You don't have your email. My email is posted everywhere. R Y A N J E S P I C H at gmail.com. So, yes, my email is everywhere. Okay, Joshua Dupree, or, du I, I don't want to butcher your last name, so I'm not going to say it. Joshua, hey Ryan, I need your help on this situation. What situation? What? Smoky Shake, thank you for the reading today. Oh, you're welcome. You're very, very welcome. Melvin Barrios? I need your help. Okay, that's with La Santissima Muerte. What's up? What is up? Alice in Chains. Hi. Victoria Hades. Hello, S. Sun. Um, Cindy Miller. Hi. Careless. Hello. Tanko Mango. Teresa Walker. Uh, Miriam something. Hello. Lisa Oaks, Nikki Davis, Medina Ray, Maishara Harris, hello from India, hello from the United States, Miss Kylie Sullivan. Why is it not letting me? Alright, yeah, I think that's the end of the comments, but yeah, but whatever. So yeah, interesting stuff. Alright guys, well I hope you guys have a great day. Um, everybody please be safe, have fun, yeah, all that good stuff. Make sure you go vote. <laughs> And I will see you all tomorrow. I will probably be live tomorrow because today, yeah, it's just been yesterday. Last night was crazy, so. But all right, guys, I love you all very much with all of my heart, all the way from Venus, all the way back down. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. So everybody have a good day. Thank you guys for all your wonderful comments. I love you guys. Um, and if you guys check out my public page, I have made a few changes. If you guys notice, don't call because I won't answer. Text message. I'll answer that. So. I love you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>